two teams turned up to Edinburgh earlier today and they both come off the back of some mentally challenging problems from the previous week. Scotland versus France and I've got Elko here to talk through the entire game. <laughs> hey CT, how you doing? Uh, wow, a few talking points on this one. <laughs> there are indeed and this game started off in such a cagey fashion. I mean no team could get possession in the other's territory so there was a lot of a lot of back and forth kicking early doors and I was expecting like almost like an explosion of this game, but it didn't really happen that way. Certainly not for the first sort of seven, eight minutes. No, we were, we were waiting for, uh, for France to, to, to get off the ferry, to get off the plane. Uh, it was very six nation esque, uh, kind of, you know, what France are going to turn up. And, um, it was, it was a bit of a weird one. And, um, uh, I don't know about you. I was completely thrown. Um, I sort of, I was, I was uh, out getting me, getting my sausages uh, before before the game, and I got I missed, I missed the anthem. So I was coming in just, just literally just for kickoff. I was, and I was like, who's what? There's some, there's something wrong here, and in, um, in terms of uh, Scotland's back three, um, and obviously um, the young kid Patterson was starting, and and um, who, who who I'm sure we'll talk about who I thought was magnificent, um, but um, Stain I think was. Was out of it because his um, his wife went into labour. So um, you know, fair play. So that was that was that was a a bit crazy. But yeah, what a weird, odd uh, game. Really, really crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it was well. Once it got going, it was full of physical intensity. That you know, the the forwards packs really went at it. But that only really kicked into gear after I think an absolutely stunning try from Scotland. The movement and the handling and the timing of the passes was so, so perfect. And I think there were at least three passes, which I would describe as being like really clutch, like really, it had to be absolutely perfect. Ended yeah. up with Patterson making a great decision to cut back inside what kind of looked like a two-on-one, but wasn't really. Got the ball to um, Hugh Jones on the inside. And then his pass, like he didn't have enough time to use his arms in the pass. So he almost just caught it. And it was like a fingers pass. To get it to work yeah. to score, I th I think it's one of the, like the great tries, really. Yeah, it was it was a brilliant try. He was like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, wasn't he? At the end, like just to nip it in, and then um, who scored it? Who who's who scored it in the end? Uh, um, White. Yeah, and he only just held. It was he was kind of bobbling it, wasn't he? And then and then yeah, yeah and then and then fell in. yeah, crack crack and try. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was two two teams that were. Uh, it was, you know, there was after that. It was just bang, bang, you know, packs going out. Obviously, Sean Edwards had had words with with France. You could see that, you know, particularly Fiku was really up for for trying to maim people, but very disciplined in terms of height. And as we know, what happened last week. Um, and however, it did even with that amazing try. And and this was mentioned in 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 um, uh, the the commentary over here. Um, in fact, it was I think it was Watson maybe that said it, or, or certainly um, uh, certainly Sam Warburton. But it, it certainly it looked like two teams that did not want to lose, as opposed to two teams who were going out there to attack and win. And that's, it's funny, like on, a, on the second game of the Six Nations, it shows you how important the 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 fixture is in, in terms of the competition. That you know France had to win, and then Wales coming off looking for a grand slam. Uh, need you know would have liked to needed a win and and uh, yeah it was it was a cagey very cagey it was there was lots of kicking I mean the conditions I, I think it was a little bit wet up there as well wasn't it yeah and there were a lot of errors a lot of errors some of them forced but there were a lot that really weren't forced either I, I mean I think the France backs dropped to quite a number of kicks yeah for, for, it was um I mean we've got a you know the elephant in the room is 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 still there from last week in terms of France. They're not right. They they didn't look. They don't look themselves. They they look like a team that are have like yourself has has got a bit of a hangover um, for different reasons. A, a World Cup hangover in, in their in their in their point of view. But um, the, the, it just it doesn't really uncharacteristic mistakes um you know the full back made some weird errors and catching and they just didn't look as fluid as they normally are it looks to me like there's something going on in the back room i don't know whether, whether there's something going on with galtier again which you know wouldn't be a surprise to be honest and um, they are under pressure they don't look the free flow but, but then you see 
they could turn it on in any second. And um, for me, the disappointing thing here is that Scotland didn't take um, sort of their opportunities, responsibility, whatever, to see that these guys weren't really on, you know, a 10 out of 10 uh, and, and building up a score and getting out ahead of them. They, they weren't, I, I don't know what you think, but I, I just feel there's something not quite right with the French team at the moment. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, again, I think they struggled with really clean lineup possession. They didn't lose too oh. many, I don't remember, but the quality of possession was really poor. And if you've got poor quality yeah. possession in poor envir- in poor conditions, then it's very difficult to get momentum. And, well, they did manage it for the um, Fiku try. They managed to get through a number of phases, um, you know, got some momentum in the game, some big carries, and it was quality play to get Fiku over in the corner. Um, a, a fantastic pass by... Um, Fly half, his name's escaping me at the moment. Jalibert. Uh, Jalibert. Jalibert, thank you. Um, so so they did have it in moments. And France is a, such a kind of momentum team that if they don't have that momentum, then they look like they're kind of not interested. But I think as soon as they do, you know, they, I agree, they're not really on it, but they did have it in moments. Hey, can, can I be just really fra- honest? Like, I, I just feel like they're not bothered. I know it's going to be really harsh. I just have the impression that they're not bothered. And when they are bothered, they're they're the best in the world. They score like they 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 suddenly get up for it, bang, score, and then the rest of it. Like if you look, I, I thought and we spoke about this in our pre was they were they were really poor last week and let Ireland's line out absolutely dominate them, right? And then the first, so I, I, we, we we thought that they were going to be very very competitive in the line out and 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 you know they they chose uh, Wokey to come in. We thought right, this is they're gonna they're gonna really try and you know at least disrupt. Or, or starve uh, Scotland of possession. The first Scottish line-out was genius. The, the movement was... I've never seen so much movement. I thought the referee actually was going to blow it for a free kick to say, hang on, what are you guys doing? This is not, you know, river dance. They were like, they went up, they went back, they went there. And you, and you could see that, obviously, France were really keen to like... Rah! And they went, and they went, and they went, and then they all went... Argh! And then, next thing, Scotland, th- and they have an attacking launch play. And then every other Scottish line-out in the first half after that, they had no movement. It was a throw jump. And the, and the French were just, their heads were in it. And I just, you know, I just feel like they, whatever's going on, they just need to, because when they are, we saw, you know, with Fuku's try, that, you know, they, they went from their own half in, bang, bang, score. They can do it if they want to, but this just seems to be a, a lack of want. Maybe I'm being harsh. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a blaze, I, I'd say. Um, but they did get back to thirteen ten, obviously with the with the Fico try. Then Scotland made a very interesting tactical decision with a, a kickable penalty. Thirty seven minutes, um, Antonio yellow carded for a no arms tackle, and and they go for the scrum and lose a penalty at that scrum. And then you know, in a game like this where it was clearly it was going to be very tight on the scores, I just felt like. You know, when you can throw the ball over the over the crossbar, they probably should have just taken the points. Yeah, yeah, t- t- take your points, particularly against France. And maybe they felt, as we felt, they weren't France were at the races, and 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 they wanted to to get out ahead, which they really needed to do. But you know, in hindsight, they they sh- they should have taken the points. I thought I thought Antonio was very lucky. Um, for me, that's intent, tucked arm, head contact wasn't looked at. Uh, I have no idea what was going on with the communications with TMO. You could not hear it on the TV. Didn't know what was happening. Again, Six Nations have got to sort that stuff out. It's not acceptable as a fan watching to go, what's going on? We didn't know. We didn't know that he'd gone to Bunker. We just heard the yellow card. There was nothing about Bunker until after the fact and the commentators came in. So actually, he has gone for a Bunker. Um, it was a bit of a shambles um, in, 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 in terms of that. Um, but uh, and I, I don't know what you thought on, on terms of that penalty. It seemed a very quick blow of the whistle. Um, I, I don't well, know. Well, the you thing I would say, say expert. Think, yeah, I mean, I, the thing I would say about why Scotland probably went for that, you know, France lose their tight head, and also Scotland had been very good in the scrum oh, up yeah. to that point. I'd say Schumann had had the the edge on Antonio up to that point anyway. So to then go to seven men, like I can understand why they did it. I just I, I might have chosen it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so yeah. I, I didn't actually really see what the... I mean, it was Ferguson going to ground, wasn't it? That was what it was given for. I, I didn't see... It a seemed replay, really so quick. Yeah. 
and it was quite early. I mean, to be fair, in the, in the game, I, I, I thought maybe a reset. And and you're right, you're right. They had to because obviously they, they were down a, a back right. So, hundred percent. Yeah, I get it. Get it. Why they did. Um, but yeah, I don't understand why the penalty was given. Um, there was a bit. You know, wasn't really much explaining uh, going on there. Yeah, and then I mean, the second half just almost. It almost sort of collapsed in on itself a little bit, didn't it? Because we had those two really great tries in the first half amongst all the errors and kicking and all, and all that kind of stuff. Then the second half really turned into two teams not wanting to lose the game. It was always within a score, sort of 16-10 for the vast majority of the second half. And yeah, just the kicking, kick pressure. France continued to make errors, which would only encourage Scotland to keep kicking them the ball, um, obviously. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely one for the purists in the second half as well. Yeah, I think yeah, you, you're right. Uh, it I don't think it was up it was up to France to change what they were doing. It wasn't up to Scotland. Scotland were ahead, and therefore their tactics were working. So why should they change? They sh- they shouldn't change. And sort of, um, the, I, I guess Finn Russell was almost daring them to to go at them um, and they didn't take the bait uh, uh, as much as he thought he, they, they, they might do. Um, this, this whole um, five meter chase rule needs to be looked at. Uh, it's, you know, it's becoming a bit of a piss take, you know, to, at one stage it was like watching two, you know, you know, me and you, when we used to watch the backs doing their training, you just see two guys kick to each other going, what are they doing? Um, so it was, it was, it was silly. So they need, they need to look at that. Um, Nigel Owens over here on comms was was sort of talking about that and saying, you know, really that the the if 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 you're ahead of the kicker, you need you should you should have to sprint back because otherwise, you know, you're going to have the kickers just stay and wait because they don't have to move, they don't have to do anything until they move five meters, sort of thing. Um, yeah, it was it was it was an odd it was an odd second half, wasn't it? It was it was um, strange, but it, but again, you know, it was up to France, and we were I, mean, I was just dying for France to suddenly click into what we know they can do, um, because you know, frankly, they they could they could have torn Scotland apart if they had it gone for it, um, which which they kind of did through a kick uh, later on. Yeah, well. Le Garrett came on and I would say France suddenly looked a lot more lively after that point. And it was his really flat pass to B.L. Berry and a fantastic bit of skill to chip that over, recognise the defence were coming up, which they had to do because they were short numbered on that blind side. B.L. Berry, perfect chip, bounced perfectly for him, finished it brilliantly. Amazing. It's exactly what we said he's in the side to do. And it's, there's there aren't many players in world rugby who can do that with like he does it almost all the time, doesn't he? He's so consistent with that bit of skill. Uh, it was a quality yeah. finish, and it deserved to win the game, really, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's 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 a great player, isn't he? And I'm sure they would have looked at the in goal areas at Murrayfield and seen, you know, there's a there's an opportunity here to kick through, and you'll 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 you'll, you'll you've got a bit more uh, room um, with your kicks to do so. And yeah, it, frankly, yeah, I think I think that that was that was enough to clinch it and and deserve deserve a win. I just wish we we see more of that. Um, we saw bits. Uh, with with Pano and and um, what's the fullback's name? His, his name escapes me. Um, uh, Ramos. Oh, Ramos. Uh, yeah, um, and, and sort of the nice little bits of interplay there, and and, and sort of going for it. Um, but you know, I guess I guess it for me it shows you like like how good France are, or, or how from how good France, how good we know France can be. Is like I was sitting there watching it going, France are awful. For, like just I was probably being. In, concentrating on them and not as much as Scotland but I was just thinking how poor they were and um you know they're probably a three out of ten and yet they were still only three points in it you know that's that's a scary thing um and that's where Scotland I think as you said earlier you know, they, they should have took their points if they had taken their points and you, you know maybe maybe they would have got more penalties because they would have been down in that area they could have been nine twelve points up but if you leave if you leave that French team with just a you know one score in it you're in, you're in, you're in problems because that's where they go. Ah, oh, we'll do it then. Uh, I know yeah. we're annoyed with what's going on off the pitch, and uh, you know our nine's not here, and oh, we have to travel over here, and what's this haggis shit? Uh, and then they, you know, they just go right, bang, we're gonna score, boom, and they scored. Um, so it's you, Scotland need to. Scotland lost that game. France, you know, France didn't win it. Scotland lost it. I think. Um, and we'll get onto the contentious. Uh, 
thing now, I'm sure. Yeah. So France managed to get another penalty. So they were 2016 up, which meant, you know, the conceding a penalty in your own territory was not really an issue as such, you know, in terms of losing the game directly. So Scotland were playing a lot then. They weren't really trying to be aggressively trying to cut the line. I think they were just trying to go through phases and eventually, you know, won't wangle some kind of penalty or something to get territory. But then Paul Rowe just found a hole and was, it looked like he was going to score. Like he was what? so close and just gutting to knock the ball on when, you, I don't know, what was it, five metres from the line, but a really good position yeah. where Scott might have scored from. Then France somehow messed up the line. Well, they win the line up, didn't they? And Russell somehow forced a, a turnover, like charging through. Yeah. Uh, there was, was a weird. loose ball yeah. or something. I can't quite remember. Um, so Scotland get the ball back again and look like they've scored, but a judge held up by the referee. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, can we just go back to Row? Just let, let's rewind and just talk about some really positive stuff. That that break was as good as you'll see. You know, uh, his lateral movement is is just fantastic, and he did it twice in the same move turned them inside out and he looked as though he was going to cut inside Ramos and then and then went on the outside and then he got caught by the cover defence knock on and you could see in his face he was good as and then you're right I don't know what happened it was like what, watching the the, the the clowns of the circus somehow uh, you know uh, they, they they managed to to turn that ball over when all they need to do was catch a drive and probably kick it and yeah look I mean uh, there's there's a few things here um, hmm. so look uh, we we have spoken about referees and TMOs, and I want to stay consistent. Whatever the referee says is gospel. That's the end of it. And I'm, I can't stand this crap I'm seeing on, on, on socials tonight where they're getting into the referee, the TMO and everything else. It's done, right? If you're relying on having to score in the last second of a game, you should have won. No, no, no sympathy, whatever. And that's two weeks in a row that Scotland have been held up over the line. You've got to learn. You know, Van der Merle did it last week, messed it up. You've got to show a picture to the referee that that's a clear try, end of, okay? That's just my personal opinion, sorry. Now, in terms of the actual incident, right, I've got a, I've got a problem with... Um, so, Nick, Ber- Nick Berry said he was, what, five inches away from it? Brilliant positioning. His good feel was... He was going to reward the defensive team because what he saw, I think, was Twigalagi had got a, a hand underneath it, big paw. So he he he's there, he sees it. So his uh, communication to TMO is no try on field decision, right? And that's that's kind of you're in trouble as as an attacking team unless there is you know absolute clear footage, you know that is definitely a try. Then you're not going to get the decision. And if you're having to spend five or six minutes watching rock and roll, that's it's not clear. It's not clear. And I know the Scottish guys are really annoyed about it. And I get it. And you, there's that bit at the end where the ball kind of comes down and you can see it in the dark. But that's not clear. I think it was a try. But you have to respect the referee and what's going on. The other thing, and I've, I've been trying to sort of see if I can find this out, is uh, at what point did Nick Berry blow his whistle? in terms of the replay you i don't know right so if you're playing in slow motion because he blows his whistle now if you when he blows his whistle things are like things are gonna, the defensive team might relax and go well get it's you know it doesn't matter and then the ball that's when the ball went down i don't know and if you don't know you don't know um i think it was a try and uh so Going forward from this, I wish they'd get rid of TMO, frankly. <laughs> I'm old school, right? If the referee says it's a try, it's a try. Uh, we can't do that because the game has moved on. What I think we need to move to, and all of us as fans will have to accept this because we'll get upset. We will get upset because we'll be on the wrong end of this. I think the benefit of the doubt should go to the attacking team. Every single time. Every time. It shouldn't be that the referee says, I think it wasn't a try. No, no, no. We want more tries. We want more excitement. It's a try. Now, that's going to cause problems if we went to that. But I think we need to move more towards a more positive, high-scoring game. And and then that takes all this stuff away from and all the abuse that Berry will get and the TMO will get. It didn't help that the TMO was Irish either. Um, that's my £500 uh, million pounds worth. 
Yes. <laughs> A great listen. Now, I, I would like to um, back you up on something like here, though. Like w- when we're discussing all these decisions, like it's never a criticism of the referee. It is like one of the toughest jobs. We are only discussing this because we find the whole intricacy of it interesting. And very rarely is it black or white. There's always some grey involved. So it's those intricacies that I personally find interesting. And it's it's never a criticism of the referee. It's an incredibly tough job and I'd never want to do it. So um, I agree. I think in all probability a try was scored but you can't give it by the letter of the law and that's that's tough on Scotland but that's the way it is yeah yeah and it's it's I think something needs to be done I, I think to, to take the pressure away from uh from the referees I, I, you know but but also you've seen uh I kind of alluded this to, to this uh, uh earlier on is it's like Defensively, well, you heard you heard Omani talk about it last week when Ireland got held up against France. That you know, th- we know that the defensive teams are very clever, so they're they're so tackling and letting them come in. And it was slightly different with what happened this evening or uh, earlier on this afternoon. But we're going to get more and more of this, and, and therefore we need to protect the referees. You know, or, or you know, or um, the fact the, the whole TMO thing has has. Um, made it very difficult for referees because before I remember before it was TMO that it didn't matter uh, because we just go, well, the, re- the ref said it wasn't a try. So we just moved on. Now mm-hmm. we're getting this whole thing of, oh, well, this is this. And it's, we, it will never, ever stop. You know, we have to move on and um, either get rid of it or, or, or make it more positive towards the, the attacking team. And we might end up with 85, 72 games, we'll, but as fans, we'll have to accept that. Uh, we'll get some weird, weird things happening. But um, yeah, I think, you know, protect the referees is, is and protect the game. Yeah. OK, let's finish on something super positive. I thought Harry Patterson, yes. to make your debut, having found that out on awesome. the morning of the game, I loved watching him play. He looked like he just won the lottery and he was out there playing a game with his mates, basically, which is exactly the way the game should be played. He was um, he was kind of aggressive. He was brave and in full of skill. Like, he, I don't... I don't remember him making a mistake. Maybe he did, but he covered up for it as soon as he did, if that was the case. I was so chuffed for him. I thought it was a fantastic debut. I thought he was fantastic. Um, you know, he was brave under the high ball. He he, he took stuff on. He, he didn't look, you know, a junior. He 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 was he was shouting at people and telling them what to do. He he was brilliant, you know. Um I believe he's still in his kit, apparently. Um <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll never he'll never take it off <laughs> he was class man he was he was really good yeah okay amazing let's wrap this one up uh that is what we think that's what we took out of this game but what do you think at home any key points that we missed any players that you think played a really key role that we haven't mentioned we'd love to hear it and have a really good discussion in the comments down below give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind and uh elka thanks very much again for your time today and quality input Cheers, TT. Take it easy. Amazing. To your home, you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.